Thank you. Today we're here to learn about informed consent procedure, sort of the things that have gone wrong in terms of investigator sites, what's been done, and what ended up in FDA warning letters, and how we can learn from these inspection findings what we can do better. But this, uh, this presentation is good for sites, it's good for sponsors, it's basically findings that have been discovered in these warning letters and kinds of the things that we can do to either just support sites or as sites themselves can do to help prevent these things from happening. This is my bio up on the screen right now. I will just tell you very briefly, I've been involved in clinical research for over 30 years. I started out as a clinical research coordinator in academia. I am based in New York City. I transitioned to industry and started out as a monitor, was a site selection specialist, study manager, ended up then in quality role in terms of quality oversight and vendor management, and about three years ago started to do independent consulting, focusing on what I liked best, which was training and quality oversight. So here's where we are today. I have nothing to disclose in terms of any financial relationship connected with this particular activity. I can't see you, but this is a picture of me. And our learning objectives for the day are listed here. We will examine the major and critical inspection findings related to informed consent procedure. We will discuss how to prevent these major and critical inspection findings related to the informed consent procedure. And then we will also implement the right corrective actions to resolve the major and critical inspection findings related to the informed consent procedure, and this is where we're going to get a little interactive, and I'm going to ask you for some of your input. We'll start first by just going through what those common deficiencies are from the clinical investigator site. We have failure to follow investigational plan and or regulations. That's number one. Informed consent issues used to be number one for many, many years, but for the last four years or so, we've gotten better with the informed consent. Not that much better because we're still down there at number six and still in the top findings, but now it's the failure to follow the investigational plan. I mean, we don't follow directions very well. We think that plan maybe is a suggestion that, you know, investigators tend to either enroll subjects that don't meet inclusion exclusion criteria or in some other way don't follow the investigational plan. So that's number one now. Protocol deviations number two, inadequate record keeping number three, inadequate accountability for investigational product four, inadequate communication with the IRB is five, and then we come to number six, which is still pretty high on the list, and kind of one of the more dangerous ones because it does involve human subject protection is basically informed consent issues. Okay, so we're going to start right off with a little bit of a knowledge check. What is the most frequent FDA inspection finding? And again, you can give me either A, B, C, or D, or the little hand and check mark X and forward mark. What is the most frequent FDA inspection finding? Informed consent issues are not the most frequent. It's number six. So it's actually inadequate. I'm sorry. It's failure. The little the C or the X is the correct one. Failure to follow the investigational plan. That is number one. So, as I said, informed consent issues were number one for many years, but for about the last four years or so, it's slipped down to number six, so it's still pretty high, but failure to follow investigational plan, failure to follow that protocol is number one. So that was kind of a trick question because you would think today's session is over informed consent that that might have been the answer. Let's move forward here, and of course, possible reasons for noncompliance, standard lack of time, lack of training, staff turnover and pressure from either the sponsor or the PI to enroll. We've seen this many times that in warning letters that it's, you know, things that are prompted by either the employee saying that, you know, they really felt pressure. And sometimes this comes up in, in out and out fraud when patients are made up or data is made up that they felt pressure either from their investigator or from a sponsor to really enroll and produce and led good people to do bad things. So these are typically the, the reasons for noncompliance.